Hey, welcome to another video. We're gonna be talking about the reason why we choose to be here in St. Vincent's College, also known as St. Vincent's Abbey, here in Litchfield, Pennsylvania for June training. We're here for two weeks, and a lot happens in two weeks. A lot of really beautiful things on top of training. This is just one of many videos you can expect for the next few days down the road. Stick around, it's gonna be fun. Like my makeup, I put false lashes on today. Okay. It's a 6'4, it doesn't connect. Sun. But, uh, but it does. On that side. This is really So we just got done listening to a human dignity presentation given by Joel and Johnny. Uh, it was really, really good. I actually teared up. I haven't teared up after listening to a talk in quite some time. So it was very, very well done. Uh, we just got done with lunch and now I want to answer the question actually, like the actual reason why I wanted to make this video is to talk about the reason why we come to St. Vincent's for training in the first place. Um, and as much as I think I know the answer, I'd rather go to a person who actually knows it a lot better than I do for um, multiple reasons. So let's go do that right now. What's up? Hey, what's up? <laughs> Not much, bro. Yeah, so as I was saying earlier, I don't really know what I'm doing here. So I brought these two, <laughs> who know way more than I do about the Culture Project and the whole reason why we're here. So why don't you guys just introduce yourself very briefly and like what your connections are to the Culture Project. My name is Brother Cashin. I'm a monk uh, here at St. Vincent Arch Abbey. And uh, I work for the Culture Project uh, first year of its founding with Kayla. Yeah, and my name is Kayla Thiedelman. I actually was a student here at St. Vincent and graduated in 2014, and I've been serving with the Culture Project for five years now. I spent three years as a missionary, the first year served with uh, Brother Cashin, and um, these past few years I've been on support staff. I was just explaining with Brother Cashin, I just really wanted to tell, talk about um, the real reason why we're here, but before we get into that, like mm -hmm. I would love for Brother Cashin to just explain like the very briefly, the origins of St. Vincent's. Mm. So yeah, there was a parish that was already here in America that was established in 1790. It was literally like a log cabin 
where they would have mass mm. for the German-speaking farming population that was here. Uh, but there were a lot of German immigrants that were coming to this area, um, so the sacramental need was greater and greater and greater. Boniface Wimmer was a monk in Germany, in Bavaria, and his dream was to bring monasticism to this new land, this to, to the United States. He asked his abbot like a couple times, and his abbot was like, no, no, no. <laughs> Eventually, through a, a series of events, uh, his abbot consented and said, yes, you can go and you can bring some monks with you. When Boniface Wimmer brought the monks over, they were all new monks. They were mm. all like fresh mm. baby monks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they didn't have an experience of German monastic life, except what they had seen, you know, probably when they would go visit or something. He was like, you know, I can't promise you like beautiful, There's there aren't like beautiful churches and cathedrals like there is here. They're not going to have the um, the food that we have. Like they're not going to have the culture that we have. Maybe he was even like they're not going to have the German beer that we have. I don't know what he said. Yeah. No. But you know, all these things that they were so used to for their lives in their German culture. At a certain point before their departure, uh, a group of them had written him a letter. Basically, they were backing out. They were a little discouraged. They were a little afraid. And Boniface Swimmer was really set on this mission. So he wrote them a letter to all of them. And uh, he said, I know that I can't promise you anything, and I won't. I won't pretend to tell you it's going to be easy. The only thing I can actually promise you is the cross. Um, and so from that big number of, of monks, only a smaller number, I believe about 18, went with him or came with him here to America. And uh, they established St. Vincent in uh, 1846. That's awesome. Yeah. So the, the monks have been here since? 1846. 1846. So 173, mm. 174 years, wow. something like that. Yeah, I, I, I just, I'm really curious to hear what you guys have to say with, because um, the Culture Project didn't just pick St. Vincent's College to be a place of training just because. Because to be honest with you, it's not the most like convenient place. It's <laughs> in the middle of nowhere and, <laughs> and it's okay, right? Like I totally get that. Um, but uh, the longer I stay here, the more I realize that it's intentional. Well, I think just in like a general sense, there's a connection that uh, I can, I think I can confirm having become a monk and having been a culture project missionary, we share the call to mission. It's like when Bonavis Swimmer came here, he didn't envision a group of men that would be monks in the cloister 24 seven like very traditional monasticism. Mm -hmm. Rather, they were like, we're gonna go into the parishes and we're gonna help wherever there's um, a need. We want to fill that need mm. without compromising our commitment to prayer uh, and our relationship with the Lord. So from the beginning, like I, I like to think of it as from the beginning, we were monks on mission. Uh, so the missionary spirit and the missionary zeal is within uh, the monastic vocation at St. Vincent. Mm. Um, that missionary, kind of like I was sharing when we did like a tour together, mm -hmm. the, the fruit of that prayer, the past 170 something, 173 or 74 years, that's like the power of that prayer, the missionary spirit, it's like seeped into the ground. It's, it's in the buildings, it's in the air. There's a sense of peace that a lot of people experience when mm -hmm. they come here. And uh, I think part of that is the, the, the fruit of that mission, missionary zeal that, that we have. Mm -hmm. And the way we exercise that is through our, our life of prayer and work, which is our founder, St. Benedict. His motto is Ora et Labora, prayer and work. Um, so we pray here, morning prayer, midday prayer, evening prayer that we pray in common. We have night prayer that we pray privately. We have a commitment to daily Lexio Divina mm -hmm. for a certain amount of time. So that's prayer with the scriptures. Uh, some monks have personal holy hours that they make. Other guys have big devotions to the Blessed Mother, or any other devotion. So our day is really seeped in prayer. Uh, and then we also, in the midst of that, we do our work. Mm. Monks teach, monks go out to parishes, uh, monks coach things, you know, monks <laughs> live, we have monks living in dorms. Uh, they garden. <laughs> monks garden, yeah, yeah. Like monks do everything because any work can be 
uh, sanctified. Yes. You know, when it, it can itself become a prayer. Mm -hmm. So we follow this like structure and this rule, not to uh, not to uh, constrain us, but to free us mm -hmm. uh, to to live freely and to, mm -hmm. yeah. And and likewise, uh, the Culture Project is a, a mission organization. So we're sent out on mission. Mm -hmm. But where I see the parallels very strong between the Benedictine lifestyle and the missionaries of the Culture Project is um, you have your vows, which are in a sense like the pillars of how you live your life. And the Culture Project has their pillars. And what I really appreciate and why I think the Benedictines are so have such fruitful work is that they begin with the monks themselves, that mm -hmm. they are welcomed into a community. They are our brothers and I really love that that's the title, you guys are brothers. Mm -hmm. um, and then you make those commitments to those different prayer times. And so for us as a mission organization, we first commit to a year of community life. <laughs> um, it's where you learn to really love, you learn to actually grow, <laughs> you in, <do>. grow in <laughs> virtue. So when we go in the classrooms, we're practicing what we preach, or we're at least trying to. <laughs> so we make uh, the same commitments to community life. We make commitments to, to prayer and to mass every single day and essentially acknowledge that we need to be formed first, that we need to receive first, then from our abundance, from our overflow, mm -hmm. we can go out and do work mm -hmm. amongst going and teaching or even just weeding the garden that we can go into those classrooms and speak to those young people mm. from the overflow of our own hearts. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but I only showed you parts of the conversation that I had with Brother Cashin and Kayla. Our conversation was actually very fruitful, like the full conversation, which I have on film. Um, so if you want to, if you want to get a hold of the whole conversation of the reason why we go here, let me know in the comments below if you would like to hear the full conversation so I can like um, upload that. Because uh, I was getting a lot from from our conversations just from drawing themes from the Benedictine rule and drawing themes from living in community and how um, yeah just the very end of that conversation we we're talking about the overflow there was so much more that we talk about after this video like <laughs> it's good stuff so um, I kind of want to give it to you but I don't want to put in the work and you not watch it <laughs> <laughs> to be quite honest with you. So if you want the content, let me know. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed that. There's so much more in store for the rest of June training. Um, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, there's a block! Ah! <laughs>